You know what's frustrating? You ask ChatGPT to teach you something. Brain health. Mentoring. Whatever it is. And you get back this generic wall of text that feels like it was written for everyone and no one. It's like asking a professor for help and getting a photocopy of last year's lecture notes. Here's what many people don't realize. ChatGPT is not the problem. The problem is that ChatGPT knows too much about the topic and too little about your goal. To be the teacher you want it to be, ChatGPT needs to understand why you want to learn something. I'm Tom, and this video will drastically improve the results you get when you ask ChatGPT to teach you something. Now, here's the thing. You don't always have the same learning goal, right? Sometimes you're sitting at dinner and someone mentions neuroplasticity, and you nod along like you know what they're talking about, but really you're thinking, I have no idea what that word means. In that case, your learning goal is simple. Understand this one concept so you don't feel lost next time it comes up. Other times, you've decided, I want to learn about brain health. Not just skim an article, but actually understand it deeply over the next month. Now, that's a completely different goal. You need a structured plan with milestones, not just a quick explanation. Different learning goals need different approaches. That's why I've got six prompts, each one designed for a specific type of learning outcome you might want. Now, before we dive into the first prompt, I want to give credit where it's due. A big shout out to the German YouTube channel Digitale Profis and their video, Die Sechs Besten Prompts zum Lernen mit KI. That's where I found my inspiration. I love their stuff. Now, if you want to spend less time fighting with technology and more time actually using it, we post a new practical demonstration as often as possible. So subscribe and you won't miss any. So let's start with the first one. Prompt one, making complex topics simple. All right, here we are at ChatGBT, fresh, clean slate. I've got my first prompt ready. This is the one that takes any intimidating topic and breaks it down so even I can understand it. There it is, pasted and primed. Check out all of these specific marching orders I'm giving ChatGPT. Explain neuroplasticity as if I were a complete beginner. Break it down into clearly understandable sections. Use analogies or metaphors. Obviously, swap neuroplasticity for whatever topic you're curious about. Well, quantum computing, Mediterranean cooking, jazz theory. This template works for anything. Now, you see the detail? I'm not just asking what is neuroplasticity. I'm telling it exactly how to teach me. And that's the secret sauce. I'm asking for concrete examples, common mistakes, and verification questions. This isn't just information. It's an actual learning experience. Now, let's hit enter. And boom. ChatGPT delivers what is neuroplasticity. Think of your brain as roads. When you learn something new, your brain builds new roads. When you stop using paths, they fade. Perfect. Now I can explain this. Then it breaks down why it matters. Recovery. Resilience. Just like muscles, your brain stays healthy when you challenge it. I love this garden analogy. Your brain is like a garden. Each time you practice something, you water certain connections. I better practice a lot to keep my brain healthy. The myth-busting section, that's gold. Before this, I believed every single one of those myths. That's what I'd been taught my whole life. I'm glad I asked ChatGPT. Prompt 2. Creating your learning path. All right. That's exactly what I needed to understand neuroplasticity a little better. But remember, that prompt was designed for one specific learning goal. Quickly grasping a single concept. Now, let's try a completely different learning goal. What if I don't just want to understand a topic? What if I want to actually master it over time? I need a structured learning plan with weekly goals and milestones. That's what prompt number two does. Let me show you. Here's my prompt already pasted in. I want to learn about brain health and memory improvement. My current knowledge level is, well, I know the basics, eat well, exercise, sleep, 
but I want to understand the science behind what actually works and create practical habits. Now, notice I'm telling it my current knowledge level. That's important. I don't want beginner explanations of things I already know. I don't want to waste my time on that. Create a structured learning plan for the next four weeks. And look at all of these specific requirements I'm asking for. Realistic weekly learning goals, practical exercises or small projects, concrete milestones for tracking progress, recommendations for two to three useful free resources. Now let me submit this and see what kind of learning plan it creates. So ChatGPT responds, here's a four week structured learning plan. And look at this, a complete roadmap. Overview, 30 to 45 minutes a day, five days a week. That's realistic, you know, it's not some fancy two hours daily that I'd abandoned by day three. Week one, understanding foundations. Keep a brain energy diary for three days. I'm collecting my own data about my own brain. Week two, nutrition and movement. Try a brain boosting meal experiment and add 20 minute walks like that. Week three, memory systems. Create a memory lab journal, practice techniques daily, and then teach one to a friend. I know there's no better way to learn something than to teach it. Week four is all about building long-term brain healthy habits, taking everything you've learned and weaving it into daily life. Now this entire learning plan came from one prompt, one well-structured prompt that told ChatGPT exactly what roadmap I needed. Prompt number three, structure and connections. The next prompt helps you see the big picture when you're dealing with multiple related concepts. It's designed for a completely different learning goal, understanding how high level concepts connect to each other. You know, like when you've got puzzle pieces scattered all over the table and suddenly you see, ah, yeah, sleep affects memory, which affects learning, which circles back to neuroplasticity. It's about seeing the whole picture, not just individual facts. Here's my third prompt. And you can see it's asking for something very specific. Help me better structure the topic of the pillars of brain health. Sleep, exercise, nutrition, social connection, mental stimulation, stress management. Look at what I'm asking for. Identify the three to five central core ideas or principles about how these pillars work together. Explain briefly how these core ideas relate to each other. For each core idea, name one to two practical application areas or examples from real life. Suggest simple memory aids or mnemonics. Summarize the most important points in three to four sentences that are easy to remember. This isn't asking what are the pillars. I already know that from the previous prompts. This is asking how do they fit together? What's the bigger picture? And ChatGPT delivers the pillars of brain health. Six pillars plus four principles. Principle number one, balance and recovery. Your brain needs both activity and rest. Principle number two, body and brain are one system. Exercise boosts blood flow. Nutrition provides building blocks. Who knew that exercise is good for my brain? Principle three, brain grows through connection. Learning and socializing trigger neuroplasticity. Got to talk to people. Principle number four, small consistent actions build resilience. These aren't six separate things. They're an interconnected system. Plus, it delivered exactly what I asked for. A memory aid to lock in the key concepts. S-E-N-S-E-S. -E -E -S. Sleep, exercise, nutrition, social connection, engagement, stress management. That's what prompt number three does. It takes scattered pieces and shows how they fit together. By the way, if you're enjoying this and would like to share it, remember that YouTube shows our videos to more people when you click that like button. And honestly, we'd love to help more folks in our age group discover these tools. All right, we've just explored three prompts in action. You saw them work and you saw the results. And I've got three more prompts in my toolkit. Now, I'm not doing live demos for these. We'd be here until dinner and Angela's making her famous lasagna tonight, so I'm not going to miss it. But let me walk you through each one and show you exactly when you'd use them. And here they are. Think of it this way. 
The first three prompts we saw in action make complex topics simple, create a learning plan, and structure knowledge, and seek connections. Those are your everyday learning tools for understanding concepts, building frameworks, and seeing how things fit together. You'll notice the brackets with capital letters like insert topic or time frame. Those are your customization spots. Just replace them with your specific content. You want to learn about jazz theory? Swap insert topic with jazz theory. Complete beginner? Replace describe your level with complete beginner. Planning a 12-week study, change time frame to 12 weeks. The template stays the same. You just plug in your details to make it yours. These next three, they're for when you need to get hands-on with what you're learning. Prop number four, extract key concepts from long text. This is a lifesaver when you're staring at a 128-page reading assignment. For example, the Medicare and You 2026 Handbook. That's what I used it for last. I was thinking I'll be 80 before I finish reading this thing. Paste your text, attach the file, or provide a link. Then, and this is key, describe your specific need. For the Medicare book, I wrote someone turning 65 who needs to understand enrollment deadlines and coverage options without drowning in government speak. Now, this is your research assistant. It cuts through 128 pages of government documentation or academic jargon and gives you just the actionable stuff you actually need. Prompt number five, practice with step-by-step -step guidance. Now, prompt five is for you want to actually do something with what you're learning. You're not just reading about it. Create number, for example, five. Practice exercises on, insert your topic, for example, arthritic hip pain, at difficulty level, for example, beginner. Don't give me the solution immediately. Instead, guide me step by step when I ask for hints. After I complete it, show me common mistakes and alternative approaches. Give me feedback on what to focus on next. This prompt is also great for learning languages, problem solving, brain exercises, chess, math, anything requiring actual skill. It doesn't just give you the answer. It gives you hints. It lets you try. It helps show you what people typically get wrong. Prompt number six, learn through writing feedback. And prompt number six is for the writers among us or for anyone who needs to communicate ideas clearly. Here's how it works. Paste your text, describe its purpose and audience, then request feedback on clarity, structure, tone, and concise phrasing. You'll receive suggestions that don't just say change this, they explain why the changes make your writing stronger. That's how you actually improve, not just for this piece, but for everything you write afterwards. This isn't your old spell check. This is learning to think like an editor. It helps you develop an eye for what makes writing actually work, not just correct, but effective. You'll understand audience needs, strengthen your logical flow, and write with more impact and precision. And over time, stronger writing habits and the confidence to craft clear, purposeful content that actually connects with readers. So there you have it. Six prompts total. Each one designed for a specific type of learning you might actually want to do. The beauty is you don't need to use all six at once. In fact, please don't. That's overwhelming. Just pick the one that matches what you're trying to learn right now and give it a try. I'll put all six prompts in the description below this video, nicely formatted so you can just copy and paste them. Save them somewhere you'll actually find them again, not in that folder labeled important that you haven't opened since 2019. Maybe create a simple document called My Learning Prompts or something equally boring and practical. Because the goal here isn't to collect prompts. It's to actually use them to learn things that interest you. So, what topic are you going to try first? Brain health? A new hobby? Understanding something your grandkids are talking about that makes absolutely no sense? Drop your answer in the comments below. I'm genuinely curious what you're planning to learn. Whatever it is, you now have the tools to learn it properly. So if you pause right now and try this, come back and tell us what happened. Even if it's, Tom, this broke my computer, we want to hear about it. At our age, we've got decades of experience that young people don't have. 
We just need to learn the language of these AI tools. And that's exactly what these six prompts give you. The language to turn ChatGPT into your personal professor who never gets tired of your questions and never, ever makes you feel stupid for asking. Enjoy.